Okay, let's talk about the OSAT, or rather the Oklahoma Subject Area Test, but we're going to be talking about a specific test, and that's the Elementary Education Subtest 2, or and this is the code here, 051, for that particular OSAT uh, test, and it has to do with math. So we're going to be taking a look at a math practice prom that you should be able to handle if you expect to do reasonably well on this uh, subtest 2 on this particular OSAT exam. So uh, we'll get into this uh, problem here. Got a nice little challenging problem here in a second, but let me introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabba Class Math, middle and high school math teacher. So I know what it's like to uh, take certification exams, teach in the classroom, <laughs> go to college, get a master's degree, all of the above. So everything that you're doing, I've done as well. And um, so I certainly appreciate, you know, all the effort it takes to become a uh, teacher, right? Now, irrespective of what level you're at, you know, high school math teacher to elementary level, it doesn't make a difference. All teachers have to put in a lot of effort to get their license and teach. So um, anyways, with that being said, I do want to say that uh, um, I what I do is I construct a lot of courses. I've been doing this for many years, online math courses. Actually, I have a very comprehensive uh, math prep course for this particular exam. I'll leave the link uh, to that in the description of this video. But what I want to do is uh, kind of challenge you to um, uh, take a look at this particular problem, because this is the kind of level of math that you're going to be expected to uh, know on this OSAT exam, okay? So one thing, uh, especially with elementary uh, teachers, that if you don't really look at what's going to be on the exam, it's not just elementary math, okay? So although you're going to be at the elementary level, the math that you need to know um, for your certification is, I kind of classify it as high school level math. So a good amount of algebra, geometry, and other uh, subjects as well. So you really have to study for the exam and as you know, uh, people do fail these certification exams. It's not uncommon for teachers to have to take these uh, exams more than once. So you don't want to be in that position if you uh, can avoid it. So, you know, the smart thing to do is, is prepare in advance. And if you kind of struggled with math, or even if you're good at math, you know, like let's say, you know, you took a math course two, three years ago, or back in high school, you're like, oh, I was good at math, and I really have to do too much studying, I don't think that's a good approach, okay? Uh, even if you're strong in math, there's a lot you have to recall, okay? So you really have to do a lot of studying and brush up on things so you can walk into this exam confidently, and that's the whole idea. It's better to over-prepare than under-prepare for sure. Okay, so let's get to this problem. Let me explain what's going on. So here we have a circle, and this is emanating here from the center. It may not be perfect. It's kind of a rough sketch. So from the center of the circle, I have this little pizza pie, this little sector we call, and it goes, it's basically 30 degrees wide right here, this arc, okay? So this forms this sector from the center, and then this is the width of the circle. We also call that the diameter. So it's 12 centimeters wide, and you have this information here. What I'd like you to do is find the area, okay, of this sector, all right, this little pizza slice. So find the area if you can. Now, I'm gonna kind of give you a clue here. I'm gonna give you the formula that you need uh, to solve this problem, and then of course I'm actually gonna solve it. But I'm uh, just curious to see if you remember what formula to use, okay? So if you wanna pause the video and try to recall that formula and then solve the problem, that would be excellent. Okay, so before I actually solve the problem completely, the one thing you need to know is the area of a circle. Okay, so the area of a circle is pi r squared. All right, so hopefully you remember what the r is. Okay, and now let's go ahead and get into solving this problem. Now, of course, anytime you want to pause the video and do it yourself, I certainly encourage that. But um, there's a couple things here, right? So we have uh, this is the formula um, for the area of a circle. We have this sector, right? So we want to find the area of the sector, not the entire circle, but let's just see how we're going to first uh, find the area of the entire circle, and then we'll get to the sector part uh, first. So the area of the entire circle 
is uh, equal to pi r. r is the radius. The radius is the distance from the center of the circle out to the edge of the circle. So in this case, it would just be half the diameter, or 6 centimeters. Okay, So hopefully you knew that. So let's go ahead and just find the area of the circle real quick. So the total area of the circle is going to be pi. The radius is 6. Uh, I'll get to the units of measure here in a second, right? And that's going to be squared. So 6 squared is 36. And then we'll write this pi behind that. So this is the way you would write that, 36 pi. Now we are using the units of measure of centimeters. So it's going to be centimeters squared. So that's the area of the entire circle. But I don't want the area of the entire circle. I want this particular little uh, segment of it. Now, the way we're going to figure this out is notice that this is 30 degrees, okay? This arc right here is 30 degrees. Well, you kind of need to basically set up a little um, uh, ratio here, okay? That this is going to be 30 degrees out of the entire distance around a circle, okay, or a measure, and that's 360 degrees. So really, we're just finding the area of uh, this uh, this proportion here, right? Just 30 degrees out of the entire 360. So that is going to be, let's go ahead and just reduce this fraction. That's going to be 3 over 36, or 3 goes into 36, 12. So we're going to be finding what the area of 1 12th of the circle, okay? So this is what we're actually looking for, okay? With the area of 1 12th of the circle. So we have the area of the entire circle, okay? So we just need to find 1 12th of the area of that entire circle. So let's go and do that now. So that's 1 12th times, let me write that a little bit better. So 1 12th times 36 pi. We'll get to the units of measure uh, in a second. 36 pi. So 12 goes into 36, that would be 3. So this would be 3 pi uh, centimeters squared. Okay, So that is the answer. That's the area of that circle. And if you uh, got that right, that's uh, excellent, Okay, especially if you remember what formula to use. So this is a basic level, um, high school level uh, type of geometry problem. Something for sure that you should be able to handle on this particular um, exam, okay? Again, uh, with especially the elementary level, as I said, um, most elementary school teachers, oftentimes, if you don't really take a look at what's on the exam, you think it's just going to be like place value and fraction, you know, things you're going to be actually doing at the elementary level, but it's not the case, okay? You're always going to be, you know, tested at a higher level. So, for example, the middle school level, for math, you know, you really need to know more advanced high school level math and beyond. And at the high school level, you get you have to get into, you know, more advanced math than that, <laughs> you know, calculus, etc. So it's just the way it is. So hopefully, um, you know, uh, again, if you got this right, that's excellent. But it's no indication that you're completely ready for this exam. If you didn't get this right, I wouldn't panic. But it's just feedback to kind of know where you, you know, where you're at and uh, what you may remember right now. Okay, so let's go and wrap up this video. Um, so uh, I've been on YouTube for, oh, 12 years, I believe, at this point. have hundreds and hundreds of videos. I'm very passionate about uh, trying to help folks. So um, if you like my teaching style, um, hopefully consider subscribing because I'm making videos all the time. And I have tons of videos on my channel that can help you out study for this exam. So uh, just a little heads up there. If you enjoyed the video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. Are you new to teaching, um, you know, as, or are you an experienced teacher? Any feedback is good feedback, so appreciate any uh, comments. And then lastly, I'll go ahead and leave uh, a link to my uh, OSAT math prep course. Very, very comprehensive. All my courses take um, have taken me several years, and I mean years, to build because I don't like to put anything out there that's not you know, high quality, like very high quality. So I think it would really benefit you. Uh, but anyways, uh, you can check that out by just clicking the link in the description. And with that being said, I thank you for your time. And I wish you all the best in your teaching career. You know, just the one thing is never give up. Teaching's challenging, but it's also extremely uh, rewarding. So I wish you all the best and have a wonderful day.